Hello, this is Daniel from Sendence Couch. SteamOS 3.5 is around the corner, promising among other tweaks, better performance in games, HDR and VRR support for external monitors, and more vibrant color settings for the Steam Deck internal screen. I am going to put this to the test in this hands-on video, including some game tests, comparing the performance between SteamOS 3.4.10 and SteamOS 3.5. First, if you want to try this out yourself, 3.5 is still in preview phase, so you need to switch your Steam Deck to the preview channel. The Steam Deck will reboot, and then you can upgrade to SteamOS version 3.5, following another reboot of the deck. This takes a while, but it has been very seamless for me. I have not gotten any error messages, it didn't break my deck, nor did it write protect my memory card, which some users unfortunately experienced. If you don't want to risk anything until 3.5 is officially released, I'm doing it for you in this video, to see what the hype is all about. Now let's check out the gaming performance. I am going to test three games in this video. Cyberpunk 2077 with its latest update 2.0. Then I am going to check out Control and last but not least Baldur's Gate 3. I am going to test these three games with SteamOS 3.4.10, which is currently the official release SteamOS version, and then compare it to version 3.5. First Cyberpunk 2077. I'm running slightly different settings compared to the built-in Steam Deck graphics configuration, as shown here, to up the visual quality a little bit. Anything below FSR quality mode is for my eyes too much reduction in quality in this game. Running through the benchmark, I left the frame rate unlocked to better compare it to any differences. Generally, I'd play this game with frame rate locked to 30 FPS. You can tweak it more if you desire, but that's how I usually run it on my setup. The average frame rate sits at 38.65 frames per second. Now let's run the same settings under SteamOS 3.5. Looking very similar already, I did end up with a result that is almost identical.
The average frame rate is 38.99, so almost identical and the tiny difference is probably just random tiny hiccups between different runs of the benchmark that are not making any differences in regular gameplay. As this looks disappointing at first, the update to version 2.0 of Cyberpunk itself made a big difference. With a slightly older version of the game, I have only gotten an average frame rate of 32.6 frames per second. Now let's look at the game Control. These are my settings I used in game. I did not run the benchmark, but instead tried a natural run through the same level. I have uncapped my frame rate in this run. I usually play this game running at a 30 FPS cap for best quality and performance. The frame rate sits around 34 FPS in general, never really falling below 30 FPS. With SteamOS 3.5, the frame rate is slightly higher. I get more time about 35 frames per second during this run, which is not a huge difference, but it makes everything more stable. Especially if you play more hectic combat scenes, you are able to lock your game to 30 frames per second with less dips below it. Now let's check out my game of the year of 2023, Baldur's Gate 3. I've been enjoying playing this game on my deck, but everyone knows, including PlayStation 5 players, that Act 3 is very demanding. Here are my settings for Baldur's Gate 3. I'm not using FSR 1, since it's not very pretty, and I'd rather have better graphical details during my gameplay. So I'm going straight into Act 3, and run with my character through the city. Especially in this part of the city, I have frequent dips below 20 FPS all the way down to 15 FPS when heading towards the city's gate. In OS version 3.5, my run down the same street almost never dips below 20 FPS. So there is some nice improvement here, just by using the new OS alone. And as a third test, I'm using the just released patch 3 for Baldur's Gate 3 on SteamOS 3.5. The frame rate seems to be a little more stable now and doesn't dip below 20 FPS anymore. To sum up my game performance tests. The performance gain isn't huge. But it is, depending on the game, definitely there and can help smoothing out dips in frame rate that were happening before. With the new OS, we also finally gain access to ray tracing. For the first time, I'm now able to select ray tracing and control when you start the game in DirectX 12 mode. The performance really suffers though, as expected, even on the lowest settings. So keeping it off might be the better option. 
Still cool though, that the option for ray tracing is there now and might be a valid option for less demanding games. Cyberpunk's ray tracing is still greyed out though and I can't activate it. A future patch for Cyberpunk is probably needed. Now what about the HDR mode for external displays? SteamOS 3.5 also comes with a firmware update for the official Valve Steam Deck dock. After that is done, you have to enable HDR separately inside the system settings. The SteamOS interface switches to HDR, but don't expect all your games to be HDR capable out of the box. Cyberpunk for example doesn't give me the option for HDR, which was disappointing to say the least. I think we need another update for the game for this to work as well. Baldur's Gate 3 on the other hand instantly recognized that HDR was available now and gave me the HDR setup prompts as I booted up the game in OS 3.5 and it works as intended. 3.5 also supports VRR displays, which is wonderful. Since I don't have a screen that supports VRR though, I'm not able to test this myself. For people who have a VRR capable display, this is going to smooth things over when frame rates become a little bit unstable. If you don't use the dock and want the internal monitor to look more vibrant, SteamOS gives you different color spaces and color temperatures to select for your own liking. A nice feature and doesn't require any homebrew mods to the system any longer. So there is a lot to look forward to with SteamOS 3.5 and it should soon be available in the regular update cycle. I have had no problems running Steam games, as well as non-Steam games running from other services. Using the internal SSD, as well as running games from my micro SD card, both worked fine. I hope this video made you a little bit excited for the next update on Steam Deck, and that you are still having fun playing games on the go. What are you looking forward to with this or future SteamOS updates? Let me know in the comments of this video. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing to this channel if you would like to see more of my videos, cool tech reviews and games. It really helps me to make more content for you in the future. Until then, I will see you next time on Sam Dan's Couch. <laughs>